Joe, are you from LA? I am not. I'm originally from Poughkeepsie, New Yorkish area, and then I lived in Boston for 13 years, and then got a call from a production company uh, out here who saw a newspaper review of a show I did in Boston, and that sort of got the ball rolling to come out and, hey, let's make money out here, as opposed to really never making money in Boston ever. Like, breaking even was the goal for those shows. May I ask what year this was? I'm sorry? May I ask what oh, year yeah. this was? Uh, we moved here in 97. 97? So been, okay. Yeah, I've been so out here 22 AOL-ish years. So ish era? Yes, exactly. Okay. Yeah, and I was, on, I was online really early. I did the Cleveland Performance Art Fest. I was a performance artist and a visual artist for before I started doing all this stuff and a photographer before that. So long. I have a weird resume. I did the Cleveland Performance Art Festival in 1995. And the way they described me was I was an internet surfer. (laughs) (laughs) I was like Joe Wilson, performance artist, internet surfer. And just like, now we're all internet surfers. Now that is not like at that point that literally was such a different thing to do that people would note it and had a word for it because it was not the norm and really not until the phones came in and normalized. Everybody had a computer. They just called it a phone and that changed behavior. And, and I think that changed behavior to, you know, David Lynch hates that people watch movies on their phone, but a lot of people watch movies on their phone and now they're making them on their phones too. So. Uh, I, I think it's a good thing. What did you love about Los Angeles when you first moved here? Uh, potential, I guess. It was, I, I came here and was head down and had a five year plan. And if things weren't working in five years, I was pulling out and I literally got married, moved here two weeks afterwards. And I was writing, I was doing stand up, I was acting, I was taking acting classes and improv classes and writing classes. And at some point I felt really spread thin. And I stopped doing stand-up for a while and really focused on screenwriting because I kind of felt like that was probably what I was going to end up doing. It seemed like the thing that fit well because acting, acting is a lot of fun, but acting in crappy stuff is not. And auditioning for crappy stuff is even less fun. And uh, so when things stop being fun and you're not making any money doing them, then you start to question why you're doing them. And so I really honed in on writing for a while and then I started doing stand-up again. I never really went back to acting. I mean, I've done a couple of things because people have asked me to do stuff, but uh, I don't consider myself an actor. I do have the ability to pretend professionally. I've been paid, so SAG after has one of those things on file for me, but I don't, you know, I did a pilot and a couple of commercials and I think what I did was, uh, in retrospect, <clears throat> I'm on my fifth, two, uh, fifth, fifth five-year plan, and uh, and they've never worked. <laughs> they've never worked. All five-year plans are. I mean, it's a nice to look at a chunk of time and say, you know, this is going to be done by this. But bird's eye view, now that I've seen like 22 years click by. The open mic that I went to when I first moved here, those are the relationships that turned into business literally like 15, 20 years later uh, because of relationships that happened there. And I think when you're when you're all low on the totem pole, you consider everyone else low on the totem pole because you're low on the totem pole and you don't realize, oh, wow, this is, you know, it's hard to figure out who to collaborate with. (laughs) because you're trying to find the right personality, but uh, that is where, you know, I know people for all that time and I know that's when, that's when the connections were made and that's when, you know, you wanna work with people you like and people you know. And so if you know people and they get a gig, they tend to bring in people that they know, which is nice, I've had it happen a couple of times. Well, from having interviewed you in 2012 and 2013, I am not going to call you the C word, which I had called you before 
and that is content creator. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. Not. Yeah. Not the other. Right, right, yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. That I'll call you off the air. So right, I'm right. kidding. Okay. But um, so with the five-year plan, the first one, what was then the backup if that didn't work? Uh, there wasn't a backup. You just knew that the initial five-year period. If well, that- I just looked at it as if if I didn't see any indication that I wasn't out of my mind trying to do this stuff, then um, I would keep going. And there was always enough. I got a pilot in two years. Um, so thing, you know, I got a Comedy Central national um, stand up contest in like the third year I was here. So stuff stuff really happened really quick. Uh, and then stuff didn't happen for a long time. <laughs> and then stuff happened again. And uh, I listened to a lot of bad advice. Um, I think I spent, I sort of looked at the entertainment industry as like, well, if I'm a good student and of the industry and I, you know, read all the trades and know all the stuff that's going on and, and that that somehow would make me uh, better as a, a, a property, as a, an entity to sell as a writer. And uh, it was a complete waste of time. <laughs> just just because I know how to, you know, what ankling means doesn't mean that reading variety is a good use of time, um, especially at this point in history. You know, back then it was, it was, you know, came out five days a week. It was thick. It was, there was a ton of information in it. Now it's like once a week and it's like a pamphlet and it doesn't matter. You know, a lot of things matter less now because there is so much to watch. There has never been this much to watch and there will never be less than right now. Check one, two, sibilance, sibilance. <laughs>